Good morning, dear colleagues. Uh, welcome to session eight, today's first session, where we are getting into the Byzantine era, finally. And we have uh, in this very first short session two speakers. And the very first speaker is Ms. Tulin Kaya, uh, PhD candidate at the Middle East Technical University in Ankara. Uh, who will present us um, and inform us about the communication system and road network in Cappadocia with her title, The Crossing Roads of Byzantine Cappadocia on the Eve of the Arab Raids, 4th to 7th century. So I've just learned that it will be uh, played by a video, right, Erdogan? Exactly. So let's start with the presentation. Hello and welcome to my presentation. I hope you are doing well. Today I'm going to talk about the crossing routes of Byzantine Cappadocia between the 4th and 7th century AD. Let's get started with my presentation. Roads create routes and routes were necessary as a means of improving or establishing effective links between the cities of the Roman Empire and the nodal points of the imperial fiscal and administrative apparatus. Routes in the Roman Empire, which were mainly used for military purposes, supported the movement of men and materials from provinces to the frontiers as well as to the political centers. Byzantine routes enabled the Roman army to deploy resources effectively and to stand against enemy threats. The Roman roads, which were well engineered and maintained, were mainly associated with military needs so that the state could control the territories and borders. Asia Minor had a dense network of communication during the late Roman and early Byzantine period. Cappadocia was one of the most significant regions of Asia Minor since the area played a vital role as constituting an outpost overseeing the frontier between the Byzantines and the Persians during the period from the 4th to the 7th century AD. The region of Byzantine Cappadocia extended the boundaries of the Euphrates to the east, Pontus to the north, Galatia to the west, and the Taurus Mountains to the south of Asia Minor. In the late Roman and early Byzantine period, Two main routes radiating from Constantinople to the Cilician Gates pass through to Cappadocia. This paper presents two main arterial networks of communication, including the Pilgrim's Road and Imperial Military Route. Moreover, this is an introductory paper indicating the importance of two main routes in Cappadocia on the eve of the Arab raids into Asia Minor from the 7th century onwards. Archaeological data and textual evidence provide information about the late Roman and early Byzantine routes in Cappadocia. The first evidence comes from the archaeological study. The presence of Roman roads in Roman Cappadocia is known archaeologically from milestones. Of 1,216 numbered and recorded milestones, which were studied by David French, 375 were found in Cappadocia that had the densest road network of communication in Asia Minor during the period in question. Of the known and recorded 375 milestones, 81 are dated to the 4th century AD and one other to the early 5th century AD. Roads in the region were constructed during the 1st century AD. Inscriptions on milestones were written in Latin and Greek. French states that, towards the end of the 1st century AD, two or more texts carved on milestones, including the ones from Tyana and Colonia found along the southeastern part of the Pilgrim's Road in Cappadocia, show power and propaganda. The second evidence comes from written sources including Antonin and Jerusalem itineraries, cartographic and geographic sources such as Tabula Pitinger and Hierarch the Synecdemus, and the accounts of Byzantine historians such as Theophanes the Confessor and Procopius, 
provide information about routes and give some hints regarding their use. The development of the Roman roads in the region is dated back to the 1st century AD. Byzantine roads in Cappadocia, as well as in other regions of Asia Minor, were in fact Roman roads. Late Roman and Byzantine routes in Cappadocia began to develop from the 1st century AD onwards. Roads in Cappadocia were established by Roman emperors, including Vespasian and Domitian. In the eastern frontier area of Asia Minor, the main road between Sedala and Melitini in the north-south direction was used to provide the security of the empire. Roads in the east of Cappadocia were also arranged for the defense of the frontier. In light of recorded milestones, it can be reasonably assumed that the main Roman roads in the province of Cappadocia extended from Sdala to Ansira, Neo Caesarea to Tavium, Sebastia to Tavium, Caesarea to Melitini, Caesarea to Amasis, Tropezus to Samosata continued to be used in the early 4th century AD. The road from Neo Caesarea to Nicomedia must have continued to be used during the 1st century and even in the early 5th century AD, which was probably of local importance. Almost all of the routes established in the imperial period continued to function for people and goods and armies in this period. When Constantinople became the capital of the Roman Empire, the routes leading to the capital gained importance. Hence, the pilgrims' road from Constantinople to the Cilician Gates, which touched upon the region of Cappadocia and included the cities of Colonia, Tyana, and Festinopolis, continued to be used for both economic and political reasons. Cappadocia was divided into two provinces in the 4th century as Cappadocia Prima and Cappadocia Secunda, making Caesarea and Tyana the capital of the two regions respectively. Hierocles mentions 12 cities in the region. Those were Caesarea, Therma, Nisa, Podandos in Cappadocia Prima, and Tyana, Kibisra, Fastinopolis, Sassima, Nazianzus, Parnassus, Caucasus, and Doara in Cappadocia Secunda. The cities which were established along the pilgrims' routes such as Tyana and Fastinopolis gained prominence in this regard. When Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire, the administrative system of the Cappadocian cities, just like other regions of Asia Minor, had changed. By the early 4th century, Christian bishops, who were supported by the state, started to demonstrate personal influence and authority in matters concerning the towns and cities in Cappadocia as well. During the late Roman early Byzantine period, Christianity, Christian Church and the Christian bishop played a dominating role in the administrative system and public life of the empire, and the Christian Church assumed a leading role in the administrative structure and social growth of the empire. Such cases seen in the city of Caesarea Mazaca in Cappadocia, where St. Basil of Caesarea and St. Gregory of Nyssa assumed the leadership and they also influenced the court of Constantinople. The twelve cities of Cappadocia established along the two main arteries were mentioned in the councils held in 325, 381, 451 and 458. They indicate the change in the administrative system as well as the continuity in the network of communication in this regard. The situation of warfare with the Persians posed a significant threat to the empire in this period. As we understand from the account of Procopius, there was a renovation effort and construction work in the buildings and fortification of the existing cities including city walls and castles as seen in Cappadocia. As one of the most significant military centers in late Roman and Byzantine Anatolia, Caesarea was surrounded by a wall in ancient times. However, the walls were not stable and it was difficult to defend the city. The walls were restored at the same time period. It seems that the city remained intact as it was known from ancient times since there were no building activities up to the 6th century as we learn from Procopius. 
The city of Caesarea has been from ancient times very large and populous, but it was surrounded by a wall which, by reason of its immoderate extent, was very easy to attack and altogether impossible to defend. The Emperor Justinian tore down the unnecessary portions of the circuit wall and surrounded the city with a wall which was truly safe and made defenses which would be utterly impregnable in case of attack. And then he made the place strong by the addition of a sufficient garrison. Thus did he guarantee the safety of the inhabitants of Caesarea in Cappadocia. There is one new route between Ansara and Caesarea, which was a crossroad leading to Cappadocia when Justiniana police was founded in the 6th century. The route from Constantinople to Caesarea, also known as the Imperial Military Route, enabled the development of the late Roman early Byzantine routes in the region. Thus, the routes coming from the north, south, west and east of Cappadocia were connected to Caesarea. This route and its variants leading to Sebastia in the north, Melitini in the east, and Germanicia in the south are known to have been used by armies and invaders. In light of primary textual evidence, Anderson mentions that Heraclius marched from Constantinople to Caesarea in Cappadocia and thence to the east. According to the historian Sibius, Anderson also states Philippicus, the general of Mauris, marched to the east by way of Caesarea in 585, following the Heraclius route. The Persians threatened the Byzantine Empire between 603 and 628 AD. Struggles with the Persians mainly took place at the eastern frontier of the empire while they also threatened the inland cities of Anatolia, including Melitini and Caesarea in Cappadocia. In the course of the raids, they attacked Cappadocia by capturing Caesarea in 610. The Persians did not aim for a permanent occupation of Anatolia, but the turmoil they created affected the political equilibrium in the Eastern Roman Empire, disrupting communication routes in the east of Asia Minor, including the ones in Cappadocia. In 626, peace was established between the Persians and the Byzantines. To sum up, it seems that the two main routes in the Byzantine Cappadocia were used for administrative and military purposes on the eve of the Arab raids, which changed the history of communication routes of Asia Minor from the second half of the 7th century onwards. Thank you for your attention. I wish good health to you all. Bye-bye. So again, sorry. Um, we thank Ms. Kaya for her presentation for this uh, video presentation. When it comes to the 6th century AD, she supports that the road network is closely connected to the military activities uh, in the East, uh, which is, um, or which leads us to our second uh, speaker, Dr. Gerim Altul from the Metropolitan Municipality of Istanbul, um, who will uh, provide us with some remarks on the building activities during the reigns of Anastasius and Justinian along, along the upper Euphrates and as far as I understood it, especially around Militini and its surrounding villages. So I hand over to you. Thank you, dear Alkibiadis. Uh, dear colleagues, hello from Istanbul. Uh, I now share my presentation. I hope you're able to see it. I think it's okay. Yes, yes. All right. Then I, I need to uh, start immediately because of the limited time uh, with a brief history of the Upper Euphrates. Uh, the Roman involvement to the Upper Euphrates region revealed with the extension of the Mithridatic Wars towards Eastern Anatolia, 
after the defeat of Mithridates and the forces that had given to him by his son-in-law, Tigranes, the king of Armenia, in 66 BC, Pompey formulated a comprehensive policy for the control of Eastern Asia Minor, west of and to a large extent beyond the Euphrates. West of the river, annexed as Roman provinces, and beyond the river, Pompey installed a, client, uh, a series of client kings uh, stretching along the eastern bank of the Euphrates. Pompey's policy was endorsed and extended by Augustus in the first century AD. The territorial balances were achieved with Augustus' treaty with the Parthian kingdom. According to sources, sources such as Plinius, on the upper Euphrates itself, the first attested construction activities were carried out under the reign of Emperor Claudius to consolidate Roman influence in the remotest corner of Cappadocia. The Euphrates Basin was crossed by strategic roads of highest importance, but the whole territory was effectively unguarded as it was open to the possible attack routes from the Northeast. During the reign of Emperor Nero, the course of Euphrates was formally accepted as the Eastern frontier of the Roman Empire. Under Vespasian, the client kingdoms Armenia Minor and Comagene were annexed. Direct, direct control stretched from Anatolia to the Black Sea with outlying forts as far as Sebastopolis below the Caucasus. A network of strategic road system was constructed to provide a rapid movement of troops and supplies towards and along the upper Euphrates. From the time of their arrival, the legions at Satala and Melitene required a road along the frontier to link the fortresses. Um, the traces of these roads remains visible on the ground in certain parts of Kemalia near Kozlupunar, Keklikpunaru, Duruköy, and present Aun Arabi road route and Beregezan areas. It is particularly well, pre well preserved with Kuyulan on the road route to Divri. The road is uniformly three meters wide with carefully built curves and spine. The sections are straight, the bands are sharply defined. It follows ridges often several kilometers in the rear of the Euphrates. The date of the road uh, can also be inferred from the road's direct association with a single arch Roman bridge near Sujain. Although this bridge appears with its masonry to date from the late second and third century, from this period, military installations were built around the surveyed area, including Alun, Kemalia, and Arabkir, in order to strengthen the defense system extending along the Euphrates River. During the third century, there is no other archaeological evidence except the bridge near Sujain and numerous rock cut tombs of the Arcosolium type. From the excavations in Alm near Panik Urini, uh, a concentration of coins, mainly from the uh, mint of Caesarea, could be associated with the records of the reconstruction activity of the southern supply road between Komana and Melitene in this period. Substantial military activity along the Euphrates at the beginning of the fourth century is suggested by density of the coins, which were unearthed during the archeological excavations around the Panic Ereni, especially dating to time of Constantine the Great. Uh, Panic Ereni, near modern day Aun in Elazığ, remained as the only military site where systematical archeological excavations were carried out by Richard Harper, for the British Institute of Archaeology at Ankara in the late 1960s, which is generally associated with Daskusa by the scholars. Although it is too small to have been an auxiliary fort, it was placed to control the minor route crossing the Euphrates at Keban. Earliest data derived from the site was finds including few Trajanic coins and the Flavian inscription of Cassanius Gallus was found reused in the late 4th century walls, the fort was occupied in the 4th and 5th centuries before the frontier line advanced into Armenia. It may be identified with the later site of Daskusa and has been thought to be a replacement for an earlier auxiliary, auxiliary fort uh, from which a Flavian inscription survives. During the centuries-long struggle between the Roman and Persian Empire, the 6th century, marks a turning point in the last construction activities on the upper Euphrates Basin. At this period, 
taking the advantage, the treaty signed with Sasanian Empire. Justinian decided to rebuild fortifications and roads that were in state of disrepair all along the eastern frontier zone, including construction of new bridges. This fact is apparent from the building of Procopius. The highlights of this book were not defenses, however, from the part of book three, as well as book five, imperial consent for the fortifications in the eastern parts of Anatolia, east and west of the Euphrates was a major theme. In the book three of the buildings, Procopius describes how the emperor renewed the fortifications of the major Cappadocian city of Caesarea. At Satala, he constructed a new outer wall, and at Melitene, completed the construction of fortifications started by Anastasius around the city. Melitene, now Eskimalatia, remained the fortress of 12th Fulminata Legion, at least until the end of the fourth century. Around the Melitene grew up a substantial settlement. As we learn from Procopius, on its Trajan conferred city status and became a metropolis. In the surrounding plain were temples, the agora, streets, and other public buildings. None of them are visible now, even the legionary garrison has left no trace other than coins. Only the massive cores of some of the facing of its fortifications survive with later repairs to this day. Militene was a major urban center and a frontier fortress for a thousand years, controlled by Roman, Sasanian, Arab, Byzantine, and Seljuk. Consequently, the structural history is complex. These are, uh, there are various claims concerning the date of the surviving walls. Gabriel, who has been studied the site during 1930s, was hesitant about committing himself to a date. While Mitford considered the work to be essentially that of Justinian, Tunefeld considered walls to be 11th century. A possible approach to resolve the question of the date of the surviving remains to examine the architectural form of the fortification. The construction technique is generally of the mortar rubble core with coarse, small ashlar facing. There are two forms of towers seen in the circuits, rectangular and pentagonal. Pentagonal and the V-shaped towers are commonly found in Balkan provinces in the fifth and sixth centuries. And there are restricted examples in Syria and Mesopotamia. The form continued in use during the Byzantine period as castles such as Ankara. Although the construction technique is closer to the late antique traditions, form of such towers are likely to be medieval rather than late Roman in date. And the Byzantine work in the 11th century is unlikely to have been more than a restoration of the earlier 6th century fortifications for throughout the history of the Arab and Byzantine conflict. Uh, results of the recent study reveals that Justinian's building program have also extended some of the fortified settlements or even forts, such as the ruins located nearby the Chit village, so-called uh, Sabus and small fort on the crossing point at Ormansertse village. Uh, remains of a large fort at Chit village stand high above the Euphrates, some three kilometers east of the frontier road between Arabia and Kemalia. This fort was surveyed by Timothy Midfort and was published by the same author with a sketch plan and a brief report. According to Midfort, the fort where could be the place that was shown as Saba in Tabula Petingeriana in Notitia Dignitatum, where was emplaced by a cavalry unit, Equite Sagittari, is previously mentioned as Sabu. The plan of the fortified site recalls the much smaller fort at Panic Ereni. According to Midfort, who surveyed the area uh, several seasons after the 1960s, the southern west walls conform the standard profiles of aux auxiliary forts. Uh, from the other regions and may represent the only survival of the original subsequently enlarged. As Midford states, an Equites Sagittari formed the garrison at the end of the fourth century, a later equivalent of Alla Miliaria. Such a unit will require up to four hectares, which for a fortified site provides. However, the literary sources might let us suppose that this site could be a fortified early Byzantine village as well, 
According to the chronography of Ioannis Malalas of the 6th century, attacks by Hunnic tribes across the Caucasus into eastern Anatolia in 516 prompted Anastasius to construct defenses for Komai, the village. Such village fortifications are difficult to identify and the subject has received a little attention outside the frontier regions. The facing of the south wall, which is preserved at height of four meters, bears a striking resemblance uh, to the surviving walls at Melitene. Most probably date from the construction works under Justinian. <clears throat> Even so, the similar construction techniques suggest that his project was extending this fortified settlement. Masonry of the wall contains the small ashlar blocks built with mortar on inner and other facings. Between them, there's a core of rubble and mortar measured about one and a half meters. Any remains of external tower couldn't be identified. Perhaps, as mentioned by Midford, the towers were located on the inner side of the walls. No inscription or coins known from the site yet. Uh, the surface finds include coarse pottery, which cannot be dated with any confidence, but the fragments of bricks and the roof tiles uh, are clearly construction elements of the late Roman and early Byzantine period. The dams of iron uh, slag seen in some places might point out the industrial activities inside this fortified uh, settlement. Uh, ruins at Ormansertu village remains of a probable guard post, which is relatively much smaller than the one so-called Sabus, had been also documented at one kilometer east of Ormansertu village, located at 10 kilometers at south of Sabus fort. The remains of this unpublished small fort named as Deliktash Kalesi by the local people, a part of it was preserved up to three meters high and the average thickness of it is two meters. Small ashlar masonry with mortar rubble, rubble core represents similarity again with the walls of Melitene and the one at uh, Sabus. The supply road routing to the fort is uh, partly cut from the main road and built with uh, small irregular stones documented during my visit in uh, 2004. This was uh, this recently destroyed uh, during in the construction of hydroelectric. Uh, system. Uh, this site was surrounded with high rocks stand on strategic points where the site of fortified settlement at Sabus can be seen easily and it had to be important for the security of the area. No surface ceramics have been detected except some dolium fragments appeared by the illegal excavations. There is also firm evidence of the existence of many other forts along the Euphrates known from literary sources, the Notitia Dignitatum, Antonine Itinerary, or Tabula Petringeriana. One of them identified only by survival of an ancient name such as Zimara, Pingan near Illich. This fort was known to Plinius from Corbulo's campaigns. Furthermore, uh, the Karamara Bridge near Oon, which was most probably built during this period and dismantled by construction of Kebandam in 1975, might be considered as one of the most important yeah, yeah, uh, of Justinian's building activity. It's a single arch bridge crossed over the Arab Deer Creek. Karamara, with its pointed arch of 17 meters span, is a very rare example among the early Byzantine bridges. On the downstream eastern side, it has nearly an intact inscription in Greek is engraved into the, into the blocks along the arch radius, citing almost verbatim Psalm 121 verse eight of the Bible. The text reads, the Lord will guard your going out and your coming in from this time for and forever, amen. Analysis of Greek letter forms confirm 6th century construction date for the bridge. Uh, Procopius described the emperor's role uh, providing funds for the renewal of the fortifications and repair of the cities along the key strategic routes across eastern Anatolia, linking the important cities with the former legionary fort 
fortresses. The state may be seen to have responded to new circumstances, as in the regions of both Anastasius and Justinian, uh, there was a need to counter more aggressive Sasanian ambitions along the eastern borders, as well as to support Justinian's expansionist uh, policies. Thank you for your attention. I hope I able to finish in 15 minutes. Yes, you were. <laughs> Thank you very much, um, Kerim. Uh, so we can, uh, we are on time and we can move forward to our uh, discussion. Uh, even though we cannot really discuss the first paper with our speaker, um, but if there are any comments, um, please feel free. This does not seem to be. So then we can uh, right away move to our second speaker and we have a lot of time for discussion now with you, Kerim. Um, please, any comments, any uh, suggestions, questions? Well, if I may, I have a, a question then. Um, first of all, thank you very much for your highly interesting uh, paper and this astonishing um, results uh, of your studies. Um, I was wondering if you by any chance uh, had the possibility to take, for example, um, or to investigate the construction materials such as mortar. Did you have the chance to take any mortar samples of the... Uh, no, no, I'll give you yeah, this. No. no. Okay, because I, I guess, because I know about the, the problematic of dating um, architecture or a precise dating of architecture. And to be honest, we have to be um, very cautious, uh, cautious with yeah. uh, Procopius, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so the analysis of mortar might uh, give us some answers for a precise dating either uh, slightly before, slightly after, or within the period yeah. of uh, Emperor Justinian the um, first. So actually some, something like to add to the um, study of the architectural shape. Sure. Is there any plan to, to, to take samples or is there any possibility? Actually, I keep a small fragment, yes. I kept it, just a, just a small uh, piece of a mortar uh, from mm -hmm. the Sabus, uh, but never able to uh, uh, make a lab laboratory analysis for this. Mm -hmm. But I still have it. It's just, just a, sm a small uh, piece of a mortar with me. Okay. So <laughs> is there, a, a, from the point of the authorities, is it possible to, to, um, to get uh, the small to samples analyzed? Yeah, I don't know actually, not uh, experienced uh, this kind of uh, study before. But okay, because that would be very interesting I actually. Think you're, and, yes, um, you're very right. We, uh, the, uh, if I may add that, uh, the uh, German Archaeological Institute, I um, started a project on the Byzantine mortars, mortar studies. And uh, if you uh, or the authorities would be interested, we could mm -hmm. um, offer or provide the analysis of this mortar. It would be highly interesting uh, and adding to your studies there. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alkivi. Yeah, this one. Let's keep in touch with uh, yeah, yeah, for sure, that. Yeah, for sure, yes. Yes, for sure. But uh, are there any other comments, questions from the audience? Hello, may I ask a question? Can you hear me? Yes. I want to ask a question, if it's okay. Yes. Uh, I want sure, to, please. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the pre presentation also. Uh, I want to ask, what do you mean when you say a uh, village uh, fortification? Uh, are they f uh, f really uh, Byzantine fort fortifications or uh, you have some uh, information just about history? Uh, I mean, uh, are they really 
e, constructed uh, at the Byzantine period or um, another uh, time, but they, they used at the old history. I mean, uh, what is the fort, uh, village fortification? I yeah, it was very difficult, yes. <laughs> we know from Johannes Malalas, he mentions this, uh, the Komai has uh, uh, fort fortified during the reign of Anastasius. But I, I mean, I'm talking about some uh, rural settlements, some rural settlements. There were rural settlements, of course, in the area. Uh, mm -hmm. There are remains of the, uh, of the buildings there. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a problem uh, uh, almost never studied, I think, in this area. So it's, it is a big problem. But I just need to mention uh, mm -hmm. as a possibility of the Sabus fort, because it's a quite large uh, fortified uh, area, and there's a considerable fill inside, and uh, uh, there are visible contours of the buildings inside. So uh, maybe this could be uh, an example uh, for the Johannes Malala's descriptions as the, as the fortified rural settlements. It's just an idea, just mm -hmm. an idea here. Thank you. In fact, the Timothy Midford was published here as a, a fort of a, a cavalry unit, the, the Equites Sagittari, uh, the cavalry units from a late Roman period. Thank you. Buiron, Buiron. Any other questions? Comments? Uh, um can I perhaps, uh, sorry, um, can I perhaps do a little yes. uh, sort of remark, just a very little remark? <laughs> yes, possible. please, Professor. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. All right, right, thank you. Uh, well, um, <clears throat> maybe we should uh, also take into account what Tulin uh, presented, because uh, uh, I just want to say, uh, especially, um, uh, I mean, if you consider that we had a paper uh, previously by a colleague, your Landesmann, Ire Landesmann, <laughs> uh, from Thessaloniki, uh, Dr. Dr Drakalis, who did not ma manage to uh, partic participate because he was too sensitive in terms of virus. So that was the reason why he couldn't come. But um, it would be nice to discuss this both papers, um, I mean, Dr Drakalis with Kaya together. Um, um, but, you know, for those who are interested in provincial administration of early Byzantine Cappadocia, uh, it is important to uh, consider oh, both of those abstracts, happened. right? Can Drakalis plus Kaya. Uh, this is just a remark. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much for the remark. Any other comments, remarks, questions? If that's not the case, I would like to thank uh, our speaker. And with that, I close the, uh, this session. We are very much ahead of time, I guess. So, um, Alton, um, should we have a 20 minutes um, break okay. or? Yes, well, first of all, thank you. You've done a very well uh, chairmanship. Thank you very much for accepting that, first of all, and hope to see you in Istanbul sometime. Hope to, I mean, I'm hoping. I you. hope so too. Yes, definitely. definitely. As, well, as far as you do have no gr grip anymore, we'll just uh, find a time to meet up again. Uh, anyways, uh, so that our next chairman or chairwoman, better say, would be Roberta, if she's sort of awake, or if she's inside or outside. I don't know what she's doing right now. Roberta, are you there? Oh, she's there. She's, she's there. She got her coffee and she woke up early. I think it's three o'clock in the, in the nighttime right now in New York. Uh, so, uh, Roberta, um, would you like to uh, sort of start at 11 or would you like to uh, do something? We, we should start earlier. What would you say? Whatever the other people prefer. 20 minutes. 19 minutes. Five minutes. 90 minutes. I think we all deserve uh, to have a coffee break right now.